On today's episode, SpaceX plans for Starlink Gen 2 are revealed, Elon Musk explains how the Tesla bot fits into the company mission, work on the Starship Lunar Lander is brought to a halt yet again, the supercharger network is prepped for a massive expansion, Tesla China production reaches new highs, and we've got even more updates on the 2022 Cybertruck. So let's get going. SpaceX has revealed their future plans for the Starlink satellite constellation in a recent FCC filing, and we get a bunch of new details on their Gen 2 satellite and the function of their constellation. Starlink Gen 2 is coming in the future, not as a replacement for the existing satellite, but as a complement to enhance the service and capabilities even further as demand for satellite-based broadband continues to grow. Gen 2 satellites are expected to feature inner satellite laser links that will enable communication with one another to transfer data at a much faster rate. The SpaceX filing says, quote, the satellites will be somewhat larger and generate more power, enabling them to support expanded capabilities now and accommodate additional payloads in the future. And to launch these bigger and more powerful Starlinks, SpaceX will be using the new Starship vehicle. The current system with the Falcon 9 rocket allows them to deploy around 60 satellites per launch. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell says that Starship will be capable of deploying 400 Starlink satellites during a single launch, and Starship will be able to place the satellites in a way that allows for faster activation. To date, SpaceX is providing a Starlink beta service to over 90,000 customers in 12 countries with 1,740 internet beaming Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit. A dozen of these are operating in polar orbit, and Shotwell previously said the network will achieve global internet coverage once all satellites rise to operational altitudes of 550 kilometers. They expect the satellites to achieve their designated orbit by September. Overall, the broadband constellation could consist of over 20,000 satellites orbiting our planet, according to the new FCC filing. And that sheer amount of satellites going into orbit has got people freaking out about the dangers of collisions in space, which is valid. We've got a lot of stuff up there right now, and clearly there is a whole lot more on the way. That's brought up fears of the Kessler syndrome, which is the idea that once two objects collide in space and scatter chunks of debris in random directions, then those chunks will smash into other space objects, creating even more chunks of debris that will smash into even more objects, and so on and so on, until everything is smashed and there's just a big cloud of broken shit orbiting Earth. Obviously, we don't want that to happen, and SpaceX especially does not want that to happen. So, to help calm everyone down, SpaceX has released a full presentation of the Starlink Collision Avoidance System. The first section details their precautions against Starlink on Starlink collisions, which is pretty easy. They just assign each satellite its own slot in orbit, and each slot is positioned so that it can't possibly collide with any other slot. Each Starlink maintains its slot with position keeping burns from the onboard ion thruster. But if anything unexpected comes up, then Starlink can also use that thruster for active collision avoidance, which is right now mostly used against space debris. The plan for Starlink on debris collision avoidance involves using data from the 18th Space Control Squadron, who perform radar tracking of all space debris. SpaceX uses an automated system that ingests data from the radar tracking to evaluate risks and plan avoidance maneuvers without human input. There are still people monitoring the system in case something unexpected comes up, but for the most part, Starlink already knows where the debris is and will get out of the way automatically. The third section they cover is called Starlink on Other Operator, which is obviously the last thing we want to see happen. SpaceX wrote to the FCC when a maneuverable Starlink satellite sees a conjunction with another satellite without intervention, Starlink satellites will assume maneuver responsibility. If another operator prefers to maneuver instead, Starlink satellites can be commanded to remain ballistic for the span of the conjunction event. 
Finally, there are measures that Starlink is taking to make sure that their own satellites do not become dead hunks of junk orbiting the Earth for decades on end. At the beginning of each deployment, the Starlink is released at a very low altitude, about 270 kilometers up. Only after passing a health check can the satellite rise to its orbital slot around 550 kilometers up. If the satellite does not pass the health check, then the orbital drag at 270 kilometers will quickly pull it down into the atmosphere where friction will incinerate the whole thing. The Starlink is specifically designed to fully disassemble on re-entry and pose zero risk of damage or injury to anything on Earth. Even if a Starlink makes it into the orbital slot and then dies completely, the orbit is still low enough that drag will pull it down in about five years. And then of course, SpaceX always has the option to manually decommission a Starlink by using the ion thrusters to push it out of orbit and into the atmosphere to burn up. By the way, if you like hearing us talk about things in space, then you would probably really like our new channel, The Space Race. Over there, we are exploring the wide world of space exploration. We just made a video on how nuclear rockets work. It's really crazy. Check out The Space Race and subscribe for more content that will blow your mind. Link down below in the description. Elon has already begun making some follow-up comments on Tesla's humanoid robot that was announced at AI Day. And he's answered one of the biggest questions that has been posed by a number of people. How does this robot fit into the Tesla mission of transitioning the world to sustainable energy? The connection doesn't exactly seem clear. Elon has started to answer that point by tweeting, Bot is not directly on the path of accelerating a sustainable energy future, but it aspirationally improves the probability that the future is good. And it's good to see Elon steering the conversation in this direction. The biggest takeaway from the robot announcement really shouldn't be so much the robot itself. I mean, it'll probably be a great robot, but it's not exactly revolutionary tech at this point. We've got humanoid robots all over the place already, but it was really about the implications of this particular robot for the future of humanity. Unlike Disney or Boston Dynamic, Tesla isn't building this robot to be a big toy. This is purpose built to do work, to be a proxy for human labor. And that's going to be very important for the future. We know that Elon is very concerned about population collapse, and this robot seems to be his answer to that oncoming crisis. So one of the biggest untruths that you'll hear is about overpopulation or surplus population. That might have been true in the past, and it might still be true in underdeveloped countries, but in first world nations, our population is shrinking by a significant amount. So when we reach that time that all of the baby boomers are either dead or retired, we are going to have a hell of a lot less people available to participate in the workforce than we do today. The only solution to this problem will either have to be a decline in services or an increase in automation. And at that point, what better product could Tesla possibly have on the market than a fully automated humanoid with a machine learning brain that can do any task that a person used to do? Earlier this week, it was reported that Blue Origin had made good on a veiled threat to sue NASA over disagreements over the space agency's latest human landing system procurement decisions. Namely, that NASA decided not to proceed with Blue Origin's Blue Balls lander proposal, which was not only twice as expensive as SpaceX's Starship proposal, but also less technically sound and promised significantly less cost sharing. The lawsuit appears to have found just enough footing to disrupt the HLS program yet again. Thanks to the first protests of Blue Origin and Dynetics back in spring, NASA and SpaceX were forced to stop cooperative work on the Starship moon lander for more than three months. Now on August 19th, NASA has reportedly voluntarily paused work on the SpaceX HLS moon lander contract and will continue to do so until November 1st, potentially adding another 74 days to the total delay on this project. On its own, the announcement is already fairly bizarre. For unknown reasons, Blue Origin apparently agreed to an expedited litigation schedule in return for NASA voluntarily pausing work on the HLS contract. That basically means that Blue Origin have agreed to rush through the process of a court case that they are supposedly trying to win. Per that expedited schedule, NASA's voluntary work halt will end on November 1st after several scheduled rounds of motions and cross motions from Blue Origin, SpaceX, and the Space Agency. It's unclear when a ruling might be expected, 
but the schedule published seems to imply that it would come sometime before NASA and SpaceX resume work. Tesla is currently on a massive hiring spree for design managers of new supercharger sites as the company preps for a massive expansion of the supercharger network ahead of opening it to other electric cars. Last quarter, Tesla had 26,900 superchargers at 2,966 stations around the world, which represents 49% and 46% year-over-year growth respectively. The network is growing fast, but Tesla might need to grow even faster if it wants to follow through on the promise to open up supercharger stations to all electric vehicle manufacturers this year. The automaker recently updated its map of planned charging stations with new locations and updated timelines. Tesla is enabling new routes across the country, but there also appears to be a focus on adding more capacity in urban areas. For example, both Los Angeles and Austin, which are popular markets for Tesla, will be seeing almost a doubling of their supercharger network in the near future. Tesla Giga Shanghai is reportedly now producing 1,000 Model Y units per day, officially exceeding its Model 3 output of 800 units per day. Tesla was reportedly able to accomplish this after shutting down the entire Model Y line for four days, which paved the way for updates to the facility. Tesla China is now saying that the Y-type production has entered the high yield stage. As previously planned by Tesla, the main production of the Chinese Model Y in Q3 this year is for export to other countries. We know that made in China Model Ys have been delivered to Australia this year, and they are now beginning distribution in the European market as well, with the Model Y being spotted in Norway and Belgium. In July, Giga Shanghai exported a total of 24,347 Tesla vehicles abroad, though the Model 3 exports still outnumbered the Model Y significantly. Tesla China shipped 16,137 Model 3 units abroad and only 8,210 Model Y units. However, exports may see a shift over the following quarters as Giga Shanghai Model Y production outpaces the Model 3. All right, we know you guys are fiends for Cybertruck news, so here's the latest. The Tesla Cybertruck will not only debut a revolutionary manufacturing process, it will also be the first vehicle in the company's lineup to be equipped with Tesla Hardware 4 computer. Hardware 4 is the successor to the self-driving computer that's currently being deployed to Tesla vehicles today. Comments about the updated computer were made by Elon Musk during the Q&A section at AI Day, which featured an in-depth discussion on the company's artificial intelligence program. Elon remarked that a Hardware 4 with an all-new FSD computer would be introduced in the future. This unit would be a step up in both performance and safety. According to Elon, the new self-driving hardware will be introduced with the Tesla Cybertruck in a year or so. He later noted that with Hardware 3, Tesla's self-driving systems could perform about 300% safer than a human, but for Hardware 4, this number could increase to 1,000% more safe than the average human driver. And he also said that the new hardware would include upgraded camera modules, which would probably be those Samsung units that we heard about last month. So you could take that as an indication from Elon that the Cybertruck will be introduced in quote, a year or so from right now, which would fit with their production timeline of sometime in 2022. But that's now got us wondering, would Tesla hold back the Cybertruck until the new FSD hardware is ready? Could that lead to another delay if it doesn't all work according to plan? Or would early production Cybertrucks still come with version 3 and they make a shift to version 4 whenever it happens to be ready? It's a tough call, but what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Also, for more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up, it's theteslaspace.com, and make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. And if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.